Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit Simcox.com or call 690-300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Pastor Mai, good evening at half past five. This is update for Wednesday, 26th of July, 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news on the Isle of Man. Background to the news and sport and business and sea watch and travel. And the newsmakers in person this evening failed. Manx Telecom equipment caused the internet breakdown last night. Southern residents concerned over the possible of a wind farm. Uh, the new bishop needs to attract the young to Christianity. The Green Party leader defends the commissioner in a no-confidence vote and find out about energy from methane at a public meeting tonight. Man Benham, for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines, Fast Amai, Chanel Suku. Fast Amai. A public meeting is taking place tonight, 7.30 at the Kregna Bar, to discuss the possibility of harv- harvesting methane gas as a means for generating renewable energy. The Manx Emergency Doctor Services is being forced to close at to close at midnight tonight and tomorrow due to unforeseen circumstances. Patients who require medical attention are being asked to attend the emergency department at Nobles Hospital or in urgent situations dial 999. And an investigation is ongoing to determine the cause of interruptions to mobile data in the Onken area. In international news, members of the public have cheered Kevin Spacey as he left court a free man after being cleared of sex offences. The Oscar winner says he is humbled after being found not guilty of all nine charges brought against him. British billionaire Joe Lewis, whose family owns Tottenham Hotspur, has surrendered to police over accusations of insider trading. And a rare pair of Apple-branded trainers have gone up for sale for nearly £40,000. Those are your headlines. News at 6. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face-to-face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Jeremiah, thank you. Chanel from the Runnels Way Met Office. There is a strong wind warning in operation for the North Irish Sea. State of sea is slight or moderate. And the weather, cloudy with persistent rain coming in on a moderate to fresh west or southwest. There's some more rain after dark. Will become lighter, the rain that is, as the wind eases. Overnight minimum 14 degrees, by the way. Manannan has left. She was delayed. Engineers completed their assessments and Manannan is now en route to Liverpool. At the weather for tomorrow, Thursday, Jordan, cloudy with showers at first on a light to moderate west southwesterly, up to 19 degrees, mainly dry later on and certainly through the night into Friday, down to 14 degrees. And for Jehenia, sunny spells with occasional showers, top temperature 18 degrees Celsius. Tide still on the way back in. High water at 6 minutes past 6. Sunset 28 minutes past 9. Low tide 23 minutes to 1 a.m. Sunrise 22 minutes past 5 tomorrow morning. And the morning high water at 29 minutes past 6. Manx Glass and Glazing can produce bespoke splashbacks for your kitchen in any colours. Speak to the team on 674 573. Manx Telecom has blamed a failed component for an internet failure last night. The story from Tessa Hawley. The telecom's company has apologised to its customers following the issue, which it says happened at 11pm on Tuesday. The interruption, a failed component during a software upgrade, which Manx Telecom says included important security updates. Its networking team worked urgently last night to restore all services, with a resolution found just over half an hour later at 11.32. Additionally, Manx Telecom says it's aware of a separate issue which has been impacting a small number of customers in Onken. They've been experiencing interruptions to their mobile data. Manx Telecom says it's taken this seriously and the mobile network team, in collaboration with vendors and the Office of Communications, has conducted a thorough investigation to determine the cause of the issue. This is 
it says has been found to be interference affecting the mobile signal, which is likely being caused by third-party faulty equipment within the area. In a statement provided to Manx Radio, the telecoms firm adds, we are committed to addressing all concerns raised by our customers and strive to rectify this situation as soon as we can. Residents in the south of the Alamance, they weren't told about plans for a wind farm until it was announced in Tinwell last week. The proposal was brought to Parliament by the chair of Manx Utilities, Tim Crookle, MHK, which could see the farm built in 2026. A private group has been set up by Arbery and Russian Commissioner Kiri Jenkins for residents in the south who have concerns about the potential for four, possibly five, wind turbines. The lack of information is the main concern at the moment because without that information, people can't make informed decisions. How can residents join the group? Is it through you or is it available on the Commissioner's website? How can they join it? It's not a Commissioner's group. It is a private group. So if they, they search for Airy Stain and Scurd Wind Farm Community Action Group, it is private, so they will have to apply to be let in, but the administrators will let them in. And it's it's there to be a, a safe space so that people within that group can discuss matters without worrying what's being reported on. I would encourage any concerned residents living within a two-mile radius of the proposal. So we're looking at a sweep from the top of Balakalawi, Colby Village, Balabeg Village, Friary Park, Ronig, round to Balatrolig and Balagloni in Grenaby. For those people who are not on social media, I would encourage residents to make contact with their neighbours. I am fully aware of the polarising nature of wind farms, but the residents and interested parties need evidence-based information so that they can draw their own conclusions on what's right for their neighbourhood. No environmental impact assessments have been conducted. Understanding how this environmentally important habitat with species that have the highest level of international protection was shortlisted as one of the two possible sites is our priority. But gaining information as to the transportation, engineering and construction of the infrastructure to support the movement of the turbines and the building of the wind farm, as well as the myriad of health and other implications, is vital for residents' decision making. Mr Crookall has stated that the Manx Utilities intends to progress to planning within the next few weeks. This sets a very tight time frame for interested parties. The Isle of Man in 30 minutes. Update on Manx Radio with Andy Wind. A public meeting is taking place at half past seven tonight at the Craignet Bar to discuss the possible of harvesting methane gas as a means of generating renewable energy. The Cornish energy company Bananum is on the Isle of Man, meeting with various government bodies and farmers. Paul Fletcher is the chair of Farming and Wildlife Advisory Group on the Isle of Man. Change is always a challenge, but farmers embrace change. It's a changing world we live in. There are some things that, that are constants. The constants are the animals we work with, that we raise and care for and, and, ch- and cherish on a daily basis, and obviously their byproducts are there. Something that, if the energy chain can provide an additional income stream to Manx agriculture, then it's got to be positive. But I would say the bigger positive, not just for the farming industry, is the bigger positive is the contribution it's making to to our atmosphere, to our contribution uh, as an industry to reaching our targets to reduce our carbon emissions and, and, and our carbon footprint and so on. We've got responsibility to meet targets that are being set as part of the climate change bill and so on to meet those to help us meet those targets. It has the opportunities to help us go in the right direction. The contribution that Manx agriculture can make to the island's energy needs and to a better environmental picture is of benefit to the whole of the Isle of Man community, not just to the farming industry. So it's a question of, of agriculture being one of many, but one of several solutions to the island's future energy needs. And even, even if we're a small player in that, if we're contributing, whether it's two, three, five percent of the island's future energy needs, if Manx agriculture can deliver on that, then then it's got to be a good news story. Bishop Peter Peter Eagles is going to retire from the role of Bishop of Soda and Man in October, with work to identify a suitable replacement now underway. While the final decisions made off the island, views are being sought from Manx residents. Among the priorities, locals say the new bishop will need to attract younger residents to Christianity, to the Christian community work with businesses and government and represent all faiths. I have quite a lot of contact with a, fair, with, um, a group of doctors who are Muslims. I was discussing this with them and 
I take full responsibility for this idea, so if you think it's daft, then it's, it's my fault. Um, that in fact the bishop should be, could be seen as a, a representative of all faiths. They were very keen on this idea. Um, it seemed to me that it has two advantages. One is to, as it were, raise the faith community profile generally in, as has already been said, a secular society. And also, it means that we are free of the accusation that the bishop is simply hogging his seat um, and exercising his influence on, beh on behalf of the established church. It's important that the bishop coming into this parish, into this um, area, also has an interest in our young people, not just our teenagers, but the young people going, you know, People in their 20s, 30s, 40s, we're lacking those sort of people in some of our communities. And, you know, we are, we need very much to be able to, to draw those people into the Christian community, not necessarily into our churches, but into our Christian community. And when I talk about the Christian community, I'm not just talking about us as Anglicans, I'm talking about the other people around. Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Membership Ben McCree departed Hesham at 14 minutes past two. She'll be into Douglas uh, through the mist and the gloom in the next 20 minutes or so. On to the Lynx Band and departing this evening at 7.45, arriving in Hesham at half past 11. The overnight departure 2.15, back to Douglas at 6 tomorrow morning. As you heard earlier on, Mananan had uh, an inspection by some engineers. She left Douglas at 18 minutes to 5.00 and we'll be getting into Liverpool until about a quarter to eight. So the 7.15 departure's out of the window. The current scheduled departure is a quarter to nine tonight, which means she'll be back uh, to the Isle of Man, uh, really gone 11 o'clock tonight. Tomorrow morning's departures. Mananan departs at 7.15 for Liverpool. Ben McCree, 8.45 for Hesham. Follow the Steam Packet on Twitter for the latest sailing information. Further industrial unrest could be looming after public sector workers in the Prospect and Unite unions rejected the latest 5.5% pay offer from the Manx government. A consultative ballot of the union's membership will now be held to seek their views on possible strike action. Prospect Negotiating Officer Mick Hewer and Debbie Holsall, Regional Officer for Unite, told Manx Radio the rejection of the offer shows members have had enough of what they call meaningless discussions. During a number of discussions that we've had we have made it very clear that a substantial increase is, is required, uh, a restorative increase, for uh, want of a better term. Eventually, we had a, a, a 5% pay offer made to us, uh, which was rejected. We had another round of talks. We made it very clear again to the employer that uh, a significant increase was needed. They came back with 5.5%. Uh, we told them that we would put that out to ballot and that the result of that ballot, would, it was highly likely that that would be rejected because we don't think it comes anywhere near what we would be looking looking for. We proceeded to ballot. The, the result came back overwhelmingly rejected. Uh, so it's 77% of the members that responded in our ballot rejected it, and 91% of those that responded within Unite rejected it. Those are fairly overwhelming figures. What, what, how many of the, the union's membership actually voted? Was it a significant uh, percentage? Turnout for prospect was in excess of 63%, which in terms of ballots, and any ballot, whether that's uh, a consultative ballot for industrial action or a consultative ballot on, on pay, that is a, a reasonably high turnout. And, and it, was, it was higher than the previous turnout. And I suspect that that will be reflected in uh, Unite's turnout as well. Manx Radio Business Briefing. At 16 minutes before six rolls, Royce surpassed market expectations in its first half. It said in an update today as its ongoing transformation efforts drove improved margins and bolstered the full year outlook. The FTSE 100 company said its financial results for the first six months of the year were expected to be significantly higher than consensus 
expectations. Its underlying operating profit estimated to be in the range of 660 million sterling up to 680 million sterling, more than doubling the consensus estimate of 328 million sterling. And for a full daily market report, go to ramseycrookall.com. LVMH, the French multinational holding and conglomerate specialising in luxury goods, has signed a deal to be one of the main sponsors of the Paris Olympics and the Paralympic Games next year. Business of Fashion today reported the premium partnership deal means LVMH, that's Moe, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton brands, will benefit from sponsorship opportunities during the global sporting events. Louis Vuitton and Dior will produce uniforms for athletes. With jewellery label Chaume will provide the competition's medals. Moe Hennessy will supply the champagne for celebrations. LVMH spent 150 million euros to seal the partnership. Other premium partners include telecoms operator Orange, or Orange, as it is in France, and retailer Carrefour. The game's opening ceremony will take place along the banks of the River Seine, which is currently undergoing a massive clean-up to allow for swimming and triathlon competitions to take place next year. The Stock Market Report. Brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European stock markets closed down. The Australian dollar slid after benign inflation data suggested the Reserve Bank of Australia would forego a rate rise next week. Oil drifted near three-month highs and gold held firm. The numbers now from Ramsey Crookall are the close in London. The FTSE 100 down two-tenths of a percent at 7,676. The DAX in Frankfurt down half a percent at 16,131. And a short time ago, New York City, the Dow Jones Industrial, fractionally up six hundredths of a percent up at 35,458 the Nasdaq tech stocks index down almost four tenths of a percent at 14,094 and the S&P 500 in Chicago down two tenths of a percent at 4,559. In the exchange markets the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar 29.3 cents one euro 16.7 cents and 22 South African rand 83.3 cents in commodities gold's up half a percent at 1,970 per troy ounce and a barrel of Brent crude down almost two tenths of a percent at $82.81. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house, well, the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. <laughs> you should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. The leader of the Isle of Man Green Party has defended Ramsey Commissioner Lamara Crane about comments she made on Facebook about people who litter around Ramsey. Andrew Langan Newton says the decision to have a vote of no confidence in her was damning and deeply unfair. There was a post on a private page by a member of the Green Party, a Green Party's deputy leader, who's also Ramsey Town Commissioner, on a page on Facebook deriding people who litter in the community in Ramsey and it used a derogatory term that was then published on a public forum and then taken up by the media and published by certain parts of the media and then subsequently there was a decision by Ramsey Town Commissioners which we deeply regret we think it was a entirely unjust decision we think was manifestly wrong and hugely unjust on Lamara uh, in terms of context Lamara was calling out people who littered in the community damning them for what they were doing and I would ask anyone in Isle of Man community if they saw someone littering in front of them, how would they feel about that? What is the greater offence here? Is it the use of a swear word, or is it the proliferation of some quarters of the Isle of Man, not everyone, who litter? And then the disgust that I would call out many people in the Isle of Man to ask them, would they be disgusted if someone littered in front of them? And Lamara has a consistent record of standing up for these issues, and not just her words, but also her actions in the community of Ramsey and the wider community of the Isle of Man. And we think she should be judged on those actions, uh, not just on one statement that's been picked up in the media, uh, and um, demonising Lamora for that. So we stand by Lamora on her on her positions, on calling out these issues, and, and, and treating them in the way that we think many people in the Isle of Man would agree with us, in terms of the disgust at littering in our community. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit Simcox.com or call 690 300. 
Manx Radio Sport. Fast am I, Rob Pritchard. Fast am I. Good evening. Starting with football, an FC Isle of Man have ended their pre-season campaign with a comprehensive 5-0 victory over Canada Life Men's Premier League champions Peel in Castletown last night. The Ravens were two up inside the opening six minutes at Castletown Stadium, courtesy of Dean Pennington's calm finish after four minutes, followed by a Sean Doyle volley two minutes after. Both players then added second goals during the first period, with Pennington making it three with 18 minutes gone, and Doyle getting his brace from close range on the half-hour mark to lead 4-0 at a half-time. Joe Walters then completed the scoring in the 86th minute. The Ravens begin their 2023-24 league campaign in the NWCFL Premier Division this coming Saturday, where they'll face Withenshaw Town at the Bowl, kicking off at 6pm. Elsewhere, Manx trial star Caitlin Adshead secured two more top 10 finishes during the latest round of the 2023 Trial World Championship at the weekend. The Team Station Garage competitor headed to Italy for round six of the Trial GP Women's Class from Friday to Sunday. Adshead managed a ninth place finish on her first day on the Saturday with a score of 58. The next day, Adshead then climbed the standings to end the day two contest in seventh, also with a score of 58. After the latest round, Adshead now sits 10th in the overall classifications. And in cycling, Isle of Man rider Lizzie Holden has been back in action today for UAE Team ADQ during stage four of the 2023 Tour de France Femme. The competitors took on a gruelling 177.5 km stage from Cahors to Rodez, with a relatively flat start before climbing into the hills to the finish. A tough stage meant Holden's team wasn't able to break into the top spots, with their highest finisher, Silvio Persico, in 25th, two minutes and 26 seconds behind the stage winner. Tomorrow, stage five will see Holden and the rest of the field tackle a slightly flatter route, covering 126.1 kilometres from Ole Le Chateau to Albi. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronalds Way, the 525 Logan Air from Manchester has been cancelled. The 528 Logan Air from Liverpool, currently on time. The Top House State Logan Air from London City is delayed until 5 to 9. And the 835 EasyJet from London Gatwick, currently delayed until 20 past 9. Outbound, uh, next it's the 6 o'clock Logan Air to Liverpool, that's uh, showing us on time, and then it'll be the 5 past 9 EasyJet to London Gatwick, currently delayed, scheduled to depart at 10 to 10 tonight. In Hong Kong, gravel roads close between Harbour Road and Fairway close, they're doing some gas upgrade work there. Garth Road and Foxdale is closed between Tossaby Road and the Foxdale Road for bridge replacement. East Key Peel closed between the House of Manannan and the Road Bridge. Ballymena Road in Jerby has got face closures for water main replacement. Temporary lights on Victoria Road Douglas at Falcon Cliff Terrace Junction for water main work. And York Road Douglas is closed for resurfacing between Woodburn Road and Ballaquail Road. Annika Road and Cushock Road in Farm Hill closed in phases for resurfacing. In Bulgham, temporary lights on the coast road for wall repairs. In Abilands, temporary lights on St George's Bridge for cable work. At Glenmona, temporary lights on the coast road for patching works. And Port Cornet Road is closed in Glenmona till the end of the month for emergency road repairs. Temporary lights on Newcastle Town Road, Santon near the motel for patching work. And in Bold Ryan, Balagorn Road is closed for drainage work. HHMotorcycles.im for all your motorcycle requirements. Southgate Industrial Estate, opposite Keyside Tyres. Call 665646. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Faster by good evening. Thanks for choosing Manx Radio. Remember, after the news at 6 o'clock, it's Manx Radio's weekly arts resume at 6 o'clock with Howie Kane. It's Spotlight. The Chief Minister believes government needs to learn from the mistakes made during the COVID-19 pandemic. There's a review of government's handling of the pandemic currently underway. But on Man in Line recently, Mr Cannon discussed the inquiry and the Dr Rosalind Ranson Tribunal. The bigger issues are, are around that in terms of what actually happened, what medical advice was given, what got through to council and ministers, that is all being dealt with uh, in uh, the COVID inquiry that we've set out and we've uh, set, set that in play with uh, Kate Brunnock. KC. She is managing that independently of government. She's collating huge amounts of information and ultimately she will be in a position to make uh, some judgments around that but also all the information that's being collated will inevitably become public information and people will be able to see what exactly went on during that period. My view is the pandemic was well managed on the island and, and we escaped relatively lightly to to, to some of the chaos that ensued uh, in neighbouring uh, democracies and countries. Um, 
and therefore uh, you know my view is actually I hope that 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 that, that some of the reflections of the report will be positive nevertheless you know it's true to say that there was some loss of life um that it's probably true to say there are areas where we need to prepare for in the future we need to get ourselves ready in case we see another pandemic and the benefit really i think the the, the plus side of having a report done like this and spending that sort of public money is that we are prepared for the future and that we don't take these things lightly because you know as many of us will be aware there was no real uh in my view pre- preparation um from a government perspective to manage this type of uh, event so there should be benefits it is appropriate that we look back and of course there were people who were very upset at the way that government managed some of the uh um, process that, that was put in place under the emergency okay. uh, powers that's it for update tonight, compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department. Thanks to newsreader Chanel Suku, producer Rianne Evans, after Spotlight. Ruth Shimmons here with the greatest hits, Ernie Thorne with the opera, and Rianne tonight with After Hours at 10. W-I-N-T.